Hey everyone, it's Kat here from UpLab and thank you so much for joining me today. So in this tutorial, I'm going to explain what the heck a Facebook pixel is, the three functions of your pixel, how it works, and then how to activate yours. So although I recommend you watch the whole video, uh, you'll see in the course notes below that I've, I've listed the times for each segment and that's just in case for whatever reason you need to skip to a certain part of the video. So let's get started. So if you're currently running Facebook ads or you're thinking about running Facebook ads, then you really need to be using your pixel. Now your pixel, is basically a short piece of code. Now this is what it looks like here that Facebook is going to provide you that you are then going to put onto your website. Now I don't want you to get scared off by this. You don't need to be a developer and you don't need to know code to use your Facebook pixel or to manage it. I want to kick off by showing you a really cool example that I do at UpLab. Um, so some of you guys may have seen these ads stalking you around Facebook. If you read one of my blog posts, if you downloaded the free guide or interacted with my website or my email database in any way, really, um, you probably have seen one of these ads. So on the upper left hand corner is one of my retargeting ads. And then you'll see that uh, I'm converting. So each new enrollee for $2 per conversion. So that's very good for me and I'm very happy with those results. And that all starts with your Facebook pixel. Um, notice as well, I just want to point out how it's actually telling me how much it's costing me for each new person enrolling in my, this is my paid, my paid course. So um, this is a very good result for me. So um, those are some of the results that you're going to be able to achieve. Now there's really three things your Facebook pixel is going to do for you. I'm going to go into these uh, in a bit more detail now, and then I'll explain to you exactly how it works. So the first thing that your Facebook pixel is going to help you achieve is it's going to help you track conversions. A conversion is a completed action that you want someone to take on your website. So this could be someone making a purchase. It could be someone subscribing to your email list and even a lead or inquiry. Why is this so important? Well, let me ask you this. So if you're like a lot of people, you're probably tracking how much it's costing you for each new like or each click to your website. But does this really matter to you? No. No, right? You care about sales and you care about leads and how much those are costing you. I'm going to give you a bit of context with this. Let's say you're a copywriter and you're selling blogging services for $50. Now, let's say you've been running Facebook ads to drive people to your site and those are costing you around $2 per click. And then let's also say you receive 200 clicks to your site. So you spent a total of $400 for 200 clicks, which may or may not be good. But then you start using your Facebook pixel and you discover that with the ads, you only sold three of your blog post services. So that's a total revenue of $150. So it's costing you $400 to make $150 worth of sales. You're losing money and you probably need to change your ads and the targeting. So once you start using your pixel to track conversions, what you'll see in your ads manager is there's actually going to be a new tab called conversions. So here's just an example of what that will look like inside your ads manager. So it tells you how many people converted and the cost for each conversion, as well as your total spend. The second reason you want to be using the Facebook pixel is that it's going to help you optimize for conversions. So what does this mean? Well, it's quite simple, really. Facebook is basically going to automatically improve your ads 
so that it can show them to more people that are likely to convert or create a conversion. So that could be uh, your email subscribers, people making a purchase or an inquiry on your website, for example. And then the third reason you wanna be using your Facebook Pixel is that it's gonna help you create what we call Facebook retargeting ads. Retargeting is when you show ads to someone that has already interacted with your brand or visited your website. A really common example I think that we're all familiar with is um, say you're checking out flights to Australia online and then later on you notice that there's ads about travel deals and packages to Australia. That's retargeting in a nutshell. But here's where it gets really, really good. Not only can you target people that visited your website or are on your email list, but you can also use your pixel to retarget people based on specific actions that they took on your website, such as submitting an inquiry form or subscribing to a list or adding a product to a wish list and even searching for something specific on your site. I'll show you another example. So let's say someone adds a product from your website to their cart, but they don't end up purchasing. The reality is that 68% of people that add items to their cart don't actually end up purchasing. So what you can do with retargeting is you can actually show them ads to remind them to come back and complete their purchase. It's what I like to call advertising magic. Retargeted customers are 70 times more likely to buy from you and the ads have a 10 times higher click-through rate, so the percentage of people that click through, and also retargeted customers spend an average of five times more than the normal customer. So this is really going to be the, the, the oracle to your sales, to your advertising. So here's how the Pixel is going to help you create retargeting ads. Basically, once the pixel is on your website and someone visits your site or performs an action that you specified, such as adding an item to their shopping cart, it's going to trigger the pixel, which will then feed that information back to Facebook. That means it's basically going to track that person's Facebook ID so that later on you can show them ads in Facebook. So really those are the three crucial parts of your Facebook pixel and why you need to be using it. Let's go ahead and have a look into how it actually works. So each advertising account has one pixel. So you're only gonna have one pixel. Now this is where most marketers are gonna get stuck because when you think about it, how can you target different people who perform different actions on your site when there's only one pixel? So the answer is in the way that the pixel is structured. It's basically made up of two parts, what we call a base code and what we call a standard event code. Your base code is what identifies your advertising account. So this part will never change. It's also placed across every page on your website. I'm gonna show you how to install this correctly in the next tutorial. The second part of your pixel is what Facebook calls standard event code. This is the part that specifies the action that you're tracking for. So those are the, the purchases, the leads, the registrations. There's a total of nine standard event actions that you can track for, and I've list, listed those down uh, below in the course notes. Now, this part of the code is the part that you're going to have to change based on the action you wanna track. But again, I'm gonna show you how to do this in the next tutorial. And also, unlike the base code, which you are placing on every page of your site, the standard event code is only gonna be placed on specific pages of your site. And that's because you only want this code to be triggered when someone completes the action that you're tracking for. So for example, if you're tracking sales, you would add that purchase standard event code to the confirmation page or the thank you page. 
And the logic is that only people that have completed a purchase are going to see that thank you page. Let me give you a bit of an example using Uplab. So if we're tracking for people that are enrolling in this course, the free pixel course, we would add the standard event to the confirmation page. So that's the thank you for enrolling page. So you can see in the URL of that page, it says purchased. So we would find that page in our website's CMS management system. So the back end of the website, and then we would add the standard event to that code. And that means that we can then track everyone that enrolls in that free course. And we can then show them ads later on saying, hey, you did the, the pixel course, good on you. Now it's time to do the retargeting course. Again, when someone sees that page, the pixel that now has that standard event is going to be triggered. It's gonna send this information back to Facebook, and then you can automatically show ads to that individual. I hope this is all making sense, but if not, just, just leave your questions below. So how do you create your pixel? Well, you're not actually creating anything. You're just activating it. To do this, you're going to need to access your Facebook advertising account. From the Tools tab, you're going to click on Pixel. And then if this is your first time uh, using your pixel, uh, Facebook's going to prompt you to create it. Really what this means is you're just going to give it a name and no one sees this except yourself. So usually um, I suggest you just use your business name and then you're going to accept the terms and conditions. And that's it really. So it, it's really not that bad. So now that you've got your pixel ready to go, it's time to get it set up on your website correctly. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.